Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come out and you know he's basically said that Manchester United are around three signings away from being title contenders. Now obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had give his verdict on our 2-0 win against Manchester City yesterday and you know he basically said you know that proves that Manchester United are on their way back but you know Solskjaer knows deep down that Manchester United are improving. Uh, we are in a really good vein of form now, we are unbeaten in our last 10 games in all competitions so our last defeat came to Burnley and that was back in January. So with us being, we are now like I mentioned unbeaten in 10 games in all competitions, we have won 7 We've drawn three and I think we have kept around eight clean sheets. So that is a positive and I think this is our best run of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. And also the good news is now that, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has beaten Pep Guardiola three times as a manager. So he's beaten three times out of four games this season. And it is, of course, the first time Manchester United have done the double over Manchester City in the Premier League since the Alex Ferguson era. So it is a decade, you know, ago since we last did the double over Man City prior to the game yesterday. And yesterday, you know, was the 150th Manchester derby. And, you know, it's a good result as well, you know, because it does keeps our, it keeps our hopes up for that top four. We sit, what, like three points behind top four now because, of course, Chelsea did, did beat Everton by four goals to nil. But, you know, I think we fully deserved to win the game yesterday against Manchester City. Like I said on my match reaction, you know, I thought, like I mentioned, City did, like, dominate the second half. They did come into the game, but I thought, especially first half, Manchester United played really, really well. You know, I thought Bruno Fernandes again put a very, very good performance out. That was his Manchester Derby debut yesterday was Bruno Fernandes. And yeah, he's making the difference in the team is Bruno Fernandes. You know, very instrumental. His decision making is very, very good. And he's making things happen. And he's everywhere on the pitch. And you know, Solskjaer has been urged to build a team around Bruno Fernandes. But you know, he had a really, really good game. Obviously got an assist. You know, that's his third assist now for the football club. Um, he got he got the assist for Anthony Martial's goal. Obviously, you know the goal did come from a set piece. Ukwang Gundogan fouled Bruno Fernandez. Obviously, you know Bruno Fernandez threaded a lovely through pass to Martial, and that was you know one nil to Man United. Basically, you know both of our goals came from you know calamitous mistakes from Edison. Uh, people are saying you know that Edison should have saved Anthony Martial's first goal. But obviously, you know prior to that, Martial. Uh, Martial had the chance and he had the option to square it to Bruno Fernandes but didn't and he decided to take it on on his own. Obviously, you know, our second goal that came in stoppage time through McTominway, that was in the 96th minute, by the way, of stoppage time. That was a calamitous mistake by Edison because he threw it straight out to McTominway. I did say on my rat reaction yesterday, it was from uh, long range, was his uh, goal. I think it was around 40 yards out was McTominway's second goal. But, you know, that had uh, wrapped up the three points for Manchester United. Obviously, um, you know, there was talk saying that, you know, that Manchester United could have had a penalty because, obviously, you know, Fred had been fouled in the box. But I thought, you know, the players that had good games yesterday, I thought Amwan Bissaka did really, really well. I also mentioned that to you on my match reaction because Amwan Bissaka, you know, kept Raheem Sterling very, very quiet. And like I mentioned, you know, Amwan Bissaka's defensive contribution is good. And the good news is now we are starting to see an attacking side of Van Wan Bazaka's game. So I am very, very delighted about that. It was good to see him back in the team because he did miss the derby game to Van Wan Bazaka. Daniel James also had a really, really good game yesterday. I think a lot of United fans were, you know, criticising Solskjaer you know, for playing Daniel James because he has been overplaying him this season, but he had missed our two previous games, you know prior to the one against City yesterday, but, you know, he put a really, really good performance out. Daniel James did create some good chances in the game and he was unlucky not to score. Uh, I thought Martial played very, very well. You know, he, he has rejuvenated himself as Anthony Martial. I thought Fred and Matic also did very, very well in our midfield. Uh, Fred has really rejuvenated himself, you know, to be quite honest with you. And like I mentioned, he was very, very good in Ukraine with Shatter and Esquiz Fred. 
you know, we got him under Jose Mourinho, of course, we paid £15 million for him, but let's be honest, Fred never really got the opportunity under Jose Mourinho. He has, he has received a lot of criticism before, but since Solskjaer's come in, Fred has been given his opportunities, so he has been very, very impressive. I think Nemanja Matic, you know, he's really rejuvenated himself, like I updated you yesterday. You know, Solskjaer confirmed that he's agreed a contract extension, which means that Matic will be at the football club next season. I think, if I'm right, it's a two-year deal that the man you Matic just signed, but at one point it was looking very imminent that Matic was going to be leaving the football club. Obviously, he's a backup to the likes of Fred and McTominay, but I've got to say, Matic did really, really well when McTominay was out with that um, injury. I've got to be now honest about that, you know, but, you know, Matic did, you know, really, really well. And Matic is now into his third season at Manchester United and he's made over 100 appearances for the football club. But when we signed him from Chelsea, he did sign a three-year contract. But yeah, very, very good performance by Manchester United. Obviously, you know, like I mentioned, Manchester City had a goal disallowed in the game. Obviously, you know, there was a lot of controversy on City's disallowed goal. Some people are saying that Aguero was onside, but they had intervened and, you know, of course, they had disallowed the goal. I think actually as well in the game, Sergio Aguero went off injured. But, you know, I said, didn't I, prior to the game, I just had a feeling that Manchester United were going to beat Manchester City because, like I mentioned, we've done really well against the elite opposition this season. I think that's now 17 points we've taken off uh, the top six sides this season. You know, yes, it is. And, you know, Solskjaer hasn't only beaten Man City three times. You know, he's also beaten Chelsea four times, you know, since he became Man United manager. You know, he's overcome Fran Lampard three times. He's, you know, beaten Tottenham twice, beaten them earlier on this season. You know, beaten PSG. Beaten PSG. You know, drew with Liverpool. So, yeah, we've done really, really well against elite opposition, which is very, very good to see. And I think... That game against Man City yesterday was probably a, one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's most iconic moments as manager since that, you know, fantastic win against PSG. Obviously, you know, reflecting on that win against PSG, that was obviously, you know, enough to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job on a permanent basis at Manchester United. Obviously, from a, from a City perspective, you know, they would have been very, very disappointed. Obviously, you know, they know that they're not going to win the league this season anywhere. Obviously, you know, more or less second place is secured for Manchester City. Um, obviously, you know, City are, what, 25 points behind Liverpool. So, reflecting on their loss yesterday, Liverpool now only need two wins to secure their first ever Premier League title. So, they need two wins from their nine remaining games do Liverpool. But, you know, City know they're not going to win the league this season. I think that's City's, what, seventh defeat, is it, in the league this season now? Obviously, you know, City have been nowhere near as good in the league as there was in the past two seasons. You know, they won, obviously, the league last season. They finished on 98 points. Obviously, they won it the season before because they finished on 100 points, did Manchester City. Um, and I think Liverpool are probably going to break that record because I think Liverpool are going to finish on more than 100 points this season. But, you know, City were hoping this season that they could have won their third title on the trot. But, you know, City have already got some silverware on the board this season. You know, they have won the Cowbell Cup. That's their third Cowbell Cup on the trot, uh, Manchester City's. You know, they can still win the FA Cup can Man City because they are into the quarterfinals. I do believe City will progress to the semi-finals. Um, they can also, you know, win the Champions League. And, you know, the Champions League is City's ambition. You know, they want to win the Champions League because that's the only trophy that Manchester City have not won in their history is the Champions League. Guardiola has won it as a manager, but obviously, you know, he won it during his time at Barcelona. Of course, City had that historic win against Madrid the other week because that's the first time they've ever beaten Real Madrid in the Champions League. But I do believe City are going to progress to the last day of the competition. But yeah, City do want to win the Champions League in that. Obviously, you know, Pep Guardiola now is into his fourth season at City. Obviously, he's won a total of eight major honours with them. He's won over 100 games in the Premier League. And, you know, Pep Guardiola is still regarded as one of the best managers in the world. You know, yes, he is in that because... He's regarded as one of the best managers in the world. The main explanation why he's as good as he is because of Marcelo Bielsa, because he worked with Marcelo. Well, Marcelo Bielsa worked with him, you know, when he was younger. So you can say in a way, Guardiola is following Marcelo Bielsa's philosophy. But, you know, like I mentioned to you on the preview, you know, City 
I've got that small club mentality. I said the main explanation why City have been so good in the last four or five years is because, you know, they've built a good squad. Obviously, you know, they have got a lot of money. Spent a lot of money as well, and they are, you know, one of the richest clubs in the world. You know, they've got rich owners of Manchester City. So let's take that into the equation. Of course, you know, they are still a good team of City. You know, they won the domestic treble last season. Like I mentioned, they won back to back Premier League titles. But, you know, City, from a City perspective, you know, they'll be hopeful that they can come back stronger next season. Obviously, City have got injuries. Obviously, you know, they've got Leroy Sane out. Leroy Sane, Leroy Sane has been out with injury for the vast majority of the season. Sterling's just come back for them. Don't forget Laporte's out injured for Man City. Laporte's out injured for Man City. De Bruyne, he missed the game yesterday, but that's not excusable. You know, that is not excusable. But you can say City are definitely, you know, missing De Bruyne. Uh, like I mentioned, City are banned from the Champions League for the next two seasons. You know, they have appealed against this, this decision and they've thrown a lot of money at the appeal of Man City. Um, I don't see them, from my own perception, overcoming this uh, ban from the Champions League. There's been a lot of narratives in the media saying that Guardiola could leave Man City this summer. And there's been talk saying that possibly Pochettino could become Manchester City's next manager. But probably, you know, we'll still be there going on into next season with Pep Guardiola and that. I don't know, to be quite honest with you, you know, I haven't really delved into that too much for a while. Obviously, you know, in the game yesterday, Man United brought some substitutions on, like I mentioned. Um, Eric Bay came on, he's done really, really well since he's come back. Obviously, you know, we saw Dean Agarlo come on in the game. I'm surprised he didn't start, so he still hasn't made his full Premier League debut yet. Odi Nagalo, but he did come on. He made an he did make a good impact when he came on. And of course McTomway came on and scored the goal right in stoppage time. And you know, McTomway has just come back from injury. My own perception on Odi Nagalo is is that, you know, he seems a very, very good player. He scored three goals for Man United in two starts. He did score twice against Derby, did Odi Nagalo. And like I mentioned, he's a good cover-up to Marcus Rashford. Like Solskjaer was recently saying, he's a option of a different type of striker. He's the vocal point. He's a lifelong Manchester United fan. And we've got him on a six-month loan and we're paying like a third of his wages. Solskjaer did recently make an admission saying that we could make his transfer permanent and that. Um, but yeah, seems a very, very good player, does Odin Agarlo. So I'm actually you know, glad that we did, you know, get him in, you know, in the January transfer window. I'm really glad you know that Manchester United did get him in and that. So very, very delighted about that. Obviously, we do know that we have still got injuries. Um, obviously, you know, we've got Rashford out. He's a long-term absentee. The only long-term absentees is Rashford and Lee Grant. Rashford, of course, is out with a back injury and could be out for the rest of the season. I'm hopeful that he's not, though, because, like I mentioned, he's been one of our best players this season. Uh, but reportedly, you know... I think he could be fit for the European Championships this year. Could Marcus Rashford, like I mentioned, Lee Grant is a long-term absentee. Lee Grant hasn't really been given his chances anywhere at Manchester United, has he? I can only call him, I can only recall him playing one game, and that was against FC Astana in the Europa League group stages. You know, Pogba now is stepping up his fitness regime. He's really, really close to returning for Manchester United. He's Paul Pogba. I think, you know, he should be back for the Tottenham game next week, should Paul Pogba, because Solskjaer did say last week he was working with the physios and he's set to ch return to training this week, is Paul Pogba. But, you know, Paul Pogba's also delighted with our 2-0 win against Manchester City, but you can say he's been a miss in that midfield. You know, obviously, you know, Solskjaer is, you know, confident of the partnership of Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba because let's be honest they would complement each other fantastically well you know Solskjaer's been talking a lot about Bruno Fernandes recently and he knows the impact that he's making on the rest of the squad and that but Paul Pogba alongside him would be absolutely uh, sensational in our midfield now I think Paul Pogba will leave the club in the summer like I've mentioned but I think he'll definitely play for Manchester United again before he leaves in the summer. His appearances have been limited this season obviously no due to the injuries he's had because obviously he's only played eight games this season. He hasn't played since Boxing Day as Paul Pogba. He hasn't played since Boxing Day and he hasn't started a game from the start since September as Paul Pogba. He did initially come back but then he's, uh, another, his injury then uh, he's injury re recurrence 
and obviously you know it's kept him out for a while but I do believe he's going in the summer. I think he could go to PSG. He could make a return to Turin. Because he did enjoy four good years in Turin with Juventus. But reportedly, if we're to sell him this summer, we've quoted out that we want minimum £100 million. You know, he could possibly go to Real Madrid. Maybe on the other hand, there's a chance he could stay because Pobre is excited about the prospects of playing alongside Bruno Fernandes. You know, there's a possibility chance that Man United could extend his contract. Pogba's got a year left on his contracts. The club do have an option to extend it by further year. I think in total for the club since he rejoined from Juventus, he's made is it 150 appearances and scored like 31 goals in all competitions. But I think you know we're selling it, selling him. It would help us with our rebuilding process. Would generate quite a lot of money for his departure, and it would free up our wage bill a little bit because, like I mentioned, we've got players on. Big contracts at Manchester United and of course Paul Popper is one of them. But it's good now that he's close to returning. Obviously you no know, Bay just come back, Matomway just come back recently. Fossil Mensun to Anzebe are now back. Obviously Luke Shaw, like I've I've given Luke Shaw a hell of a lot of credit. I think you know since he's come back, he's done really, really well as Luke Shaw for Manchester United. And again, he's received a lot of criticism as Luke Shaw. He's received a lot of criticism because, let's be honest, Luke Shaw's enjoyed some bad spells as a Manchester United player. But he's also enjoyed some very, very good spells. Last season, of course, did win the double play of the season. Shaw scored his sec only his second goal for the club against Derby on Thursday. So he's really making a big impact as Luke Shaw. I think you can see the best out of him whether he's playing with a back four, whether he's playing with a back three, you know, he, he, he seems to play really, really well, does Luke Shaw. And obviously, you know, he had a difficult time under Jose Mourinho, taking into account, because he had a bad relationship with Jose Mourinho. So Luke Shaw also deserves a lot of credit. Martial's done well. Don't forget, he sustained quite a few injuries this season, Anthony Martial and that. But like I said, you know, my verdict on Solskjaer is is that I know a lot of United fans have been criticising him this season, and I've also been criticising him this season, but I think recently, definitely, Solskjaer does deserve a lot of credit. He really, really does deserve a lot of credit, because Manchester United have definitely turned things around, and I think more than likely, Solskjaer now will be given another season at Manchester United to see what he can do. Uh, this is this is of course at the moment his first full season at Manchester United, and he's been here now for almost fifteen months. He's been permanent boss for around a year now, nearly as Solskjaer. So yeah, and now things are we st we are starting to turn things around. You know, we are starting to turn things around, which is a positive. Now, Solskjaer seems to be getting the best out of the players. Now, obviously, you know, we are going to be making a lot of rotation because games are coming up thick and fast. You know, we've got last in the last 16 of the Europa League on Thursday um, in the first leg. That's a game Manchester United should be winning. The Europa League is a priority for us anyway because it's a chance for us getting some silverware on the board. Plus, it's another route to Champions League qualification. Also, too, we've got, you know, Tottenham next week. That's also another test for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United. You know, the FA Cup, that's a chance of us getting some silverware on the board because, obviously, you know, we haven't won the FA Cup since 2016. We did win it under Louis van Gaal and we are into the quarterfinals of that for the sixth season in a row. So the FA Cup's also a priority for us and the league's a priority for us because we do want to finish in that top four and Manchester United can definitely finish in that top four. You know, so yeah, rotate. we're going to be making a lot of rotation and, you know, I think we can, we're can. we more than capable of beating Tottenham uh, on Sunday. We're more than capable of, I think it's on Sunday, the game against Tottenham. It is away from home. Solskjaer has already beaten Tottenham twice this twice. As a manager, since he's come in, we're beating them 2-1 earlier on in the season. We're beating them 1-0 last season, even though we got absolutely trounced in the second half because Tottenham had a lot of chances, but we still won the game 1-0. So Solskjaer's looking to beat Tottenham for the third time as manager. And like I mentioned, Tottenham are in a bad vein of form at the moment. You know, they drew their last game 1-1 with Burnley. I think it's Jose Mourinho, and you've, you know you get a lot of Tottenham fans now demanding Jose Mourinho out. He's no longer a manager at the top level. He's passed his sell by date as Jose Mourinho, and you can't take anything away from him. He's got a good pedigree as Jose Mourinho, 
you know, in terms of the silverware and that he's won. But he has passed his sell-by date now as Mourinho. And Tottenham is struggling for that consistency. There seems to be nothing without Harry Kane. Of course, Harry Kane is out with a hamstring injury. Obviously, you know, they've got a human son out with injury. He's also, I think, a long-term absence. And he out for the rest of the season. They've got Sissoko out with injury. You know, Ben Davis came back for them not too long ago. I think Ryan Sessignon's been out of injury for Tottenham. So that's really having a bad effect on Tottenham. Of course, if Jose Mourinho is still Tottenham manager in the summer, it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches the summer. Because obviously he did make two signings, I think, in January. He got Jetson Fernandez in and Steven Bergwijn, who scored in his debut for Tottenham against Manchester City. So there were two good signings, to be fair, but... You know, Mourinho isn't the right manager to elevate Tottenham forward. He has got a contract with them until 2022, or is it 2023? Yes, it is. Uh, they made a mistake by getting rid of Mauricio Pochettino, did Tottenham. They should have kept Pochettino because I thought Pochettino enjoyed a good five-and-a-half-year tenure with Tottenham. So, yeah, this is what you know basically you know, should have done. But, yeah, I think we'll definitely know beat Tottenham on Sunday. I think, you know, Manchester United will beat Tottenham without a shadow of a doubt. And you know, like I mentioned, I honestly think we can challenge for a league next season if we can get the right caliber players this summer. So I agree with Solskjaer. Probably is right. We need around three, you know, signings. You know, to be title contenders. I want, of course, Manchester United to win the league because you know we haven't won the league since two thousand and thirteen. That is now seven years ago. So last time we won it was under the Alex Ferguson era, the last time Manchester United, of course, did win the Premier League. But I'm very com confident, you know, we can get qualification for the Champions League. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, the longer Solskjaer remains in the Manchester United job, you know, he's gaining more experience, which is very, very good. Because I know he's inexperienced as a manager. You know, that's one of my element of concerns. But the longer he's in the job, you know, he's gaining more experience. And now Solskjaer, like I mentioned, is starting to replicate what he did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager, which is obviously, you know, very, very good. We've also, you know, Solskjaer's said it's a privilege to have a good young squad because, you know, we have got a lot of young players in our team that are developing and trying to improve. You know, you've got some young players players you know that are running their first seasons in the senior squad you've got Greenwood that's in his first season in the senior squad and he's done really really well as Greenwood you know I think he's on right like 11 goals in all competitions this season 20 odd first team appearances around five or six goals in the Premier League you know you can play him as a nine or you can play him or you can play Mason Greenwood on the right you know Williams he's done really really well this season he's also another left back for us well, we did initially say he's our preference over Luke Shaw, but like I mentioned, since Luke Shaw's come back, he's done well. We'd go with Luke Shaw on the experience because Brandon Williams is inexperienced. It's only his first season in the senior squad. Garner's played a couple of games. Tuan Zebe played earlier on in the season, but now, like I mentioned, he's back. You know, Chong, I've got a lot of element of concerns about Chong, so I think he's one player Manchester United need to move on. Uh, same perception on Angel Gomez because Angel Gomez isn't getting enough opportunities at the football club. So there is a lot of young players in the squad that are developing and trying to improve. You know, but like I mentioned, Manchester United need to get rid of players in the summer. I probably expect around four to five players to leave in the summer. Obviously, we do know that a lot of players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. You know, around nine senior players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. And obviously, we reflects on some of the players that left. You know, we've generated some money for their departures. Obviously, you know, we generated a lot of money for Lukaku's departure. We got 70-odd million pounds for him. And it freed up our wage bill. Obviously, you know, with Sanchez going out on loan to Milan, that freed up our wage bill a little bit. But we are still paying the vast majority of Alexis Sanchez's wages. And, you know, we did loan quite a few players out. The players I do expect to leave in the summer, I think Jones is definitely one player that's going to go in the summer because he isn't getting any opportunities, he's Phil Jones. So I do expect him to leave Manchester United in the summer. And he's been a long servant here. You've got Jones now that's into his ninth season at the football club. We know Matic is staying. I expect Lingard and Pereira to go. Definitely expect them to go because they are two liabilities at Manchester United, are Jesse Lingard and Andres Pereira. And, you know, like I mentioned, they're struggling to get regular game time now anyway because of the arrival of Bruno Fernandes. Andres Pereira is only playing regular 
because obviously no man somewhere was injured. But they're two players that do need to be moved on, like I mentioned, Chon and Gomez also need to go. You know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of rumours going on regarding David De Gea saying, you know, that he could leave the football club in the summer. Like he updated you the other day, it did say Real Madrid were planning to put around a £70 million bidding for David De Gea. You know, don't forget Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with David De Gea. You know, they came close to getting him five years ago, but due to a fax machine on deadline day, you know, his move to Madrid didn't materialise. And I think if David De Gea was to go to, uh, if he was to leave Man United, it more than likely he'd make a return to Spain because he's from Spain, his family's from Spain, obviously he's, you know, girlfriend's from Spain, so I probably would make the return back to Spain with David De Gea. Obviously, um, PSG and Juventus have also expressed their interest in him. Obviously, you know, David De Gea is becoming a liability because he has made quite a lot of calamitous mistakes in the last year and a half or so, so he is becoming a liability, is David De Gea, but he's now into his ninth season at the club. He has enjoyed eight years here. I think he's had a good six, six and a half years out of the eight years he's been at Manchester United, and Solskjaer still believes he is, you know, the best goalkeeper in the world. You know, De Gea's made over 300 appearances in the Premier League. He's made almost 400 appearances in all competitions, and he's kept around 100-odd, over the 100 clean sheets. He's won everything here domestically. He's won the he won the club's play of the year like four times out of the past five or six seasons, reflecting on his good run of performances. Now, obviously, we consider selling him because he has been rumoured saying that Dean Henderson could become our number one goalkeeper when he does return from his loan spell with Sheffield United because he has been a revelation for Sheffield United and I think the club did make the right decision by putting him out on loan. Because obviously it's gained Dean and some more experience now. We've got Sergio Romero, who's our second choice goalkeeper. You know, he tends to play in the cup games, does Sergio Romero. So we'll be in line to start against Lask. We'll be in line to start against Lask, will Sergio Romero. But he'll make, in the game against Lask, you know, he'll make quite a lot of changes from the 2-0 win against Manchester City yesterday. So, yeah, I do expect players to leave Manchester United in the summer. You know, De Gea would generate a lot of money for his departure. Like I mentioned, we could still get a good 50, 60, 70 million pounds for him because he extended his contract last, uh, last September. Um, obviously, it was a four-year deal with an option of a third year and he's on 375 grand a week. At Manchester United is David De Gea. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, like I mentioned, we need to see more incomings this summer. You know, so far, since Solskjaer got recommended in, he's spent around £220 million on players. he got Daniel James in, Bissaka and Maguire. I think Maguire has been a great addition to the squad. He's addressed our defensive deficiencies. And in January, he brought Bruno Fernandes and Odi Nogalo in. And, obviously, you know, the players... You know, that would in for is obviously Jade and Sancho. We're looking to get a deal over the line for him. Reportedly, Sancho wants to come to Manchester United. Don't forget, you know, Jack Grealish has also been on our agenda. So, yeah, we'll spend a substantial amount this summer on recruiting more players in. Of course, you know, a lot of players are back in Solskjaer. Obviously, you know, a lot of United fans would have changed their perception on him now. Obviously, you know, you've got Ed Woodward the other week that was talking, saying, you know, he's laid the foundations for long-term success with Solskjaer and he's backing Solskjaer. Obviously, Matic came out the other week and said, you know, he's backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But, you know, I still don't know if he's a long-term solution for Man United and I think time will tell. But I think, you know, Solskjaer does deserve more time at the football club. You know, we've obviously sat three managers already since the Ferguson era and nothing's changed. You know, nothing's really changed. The only thing we've changed is managers over the years. But Manchester United are not really known for the sacking football club. Obviously, you know, Moyes went, Van Gaal went and Mourinho went. So they're the managers that have gone, like I mentioned, since the Alex Ferguson era. You know, it does take some managers some time to settle in. You know, Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years at the club when he first came in. But it was unbelievable after that what he went and accomplished. Obviously, you know, Klopp didn't settle in straight away at Liverpool. So, take that into account. You know, it does take some manager's time. But he's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because the vast majority of these players are not Solskjaer's. There's only five players that are his that he's brought in. The vast majority of these players are Mourinho's. 
You know, there's still players here from the Van Gaal era, not many, but there's still some here. Matavis, Matavis still here from the David Moyes era, and, you know, he's still going very, very strong. So, you know, Solskjaer, you know, does deserve, for me, more time at Manchester United. But a lot of our fans were critical of him, including me, earlier on in the season. That, But like I mentioned, since he got the job permanently, his record has, has been disastrous. His record at Cardiff was also disastrous. But don't forget... Solskjaer, you know, knows his club inside out. He was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years and he is a club legend, is, you know, Solskjaer. Um, regarding the director of football now, obviously, you know, I was disappointed that we didn't get a director of football in last summer because I did say that's one of the structural changes that we need at the club is a director of football, you know, because if we'd got a director of football, then Ed, then Ed Woodward could have moved away from the football and decisions, you know, do you think actually no Solskjaer you know, would be better director of football than natural manager? No, no, no. We need, you know, we should have got a director of football and that's one of the mistakes Manchester United made by not getting a director of football in. But anyway, Solskjaer says we're around three signings away from becoming title contenders. So we can get Sancho Grealish and another player in the summer. Then I think, you know, possibly going on to next season, we can be title contenders, definitely. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. And just want to mention Liverpool and Athletic Home Preview is coming up on this channel. So, yeah.